Hi, I'm Dr. Roland Roberts, Chairman of the Board of the International Association of Pageantry, and with me today is Liz Everett, uh, of course, of Liz Everett Glam. She is a uh, beauty, uh, hair, or, and make, or makeup and style artist, and uh, with uh, many accolades in the pageant industry and the style industry, um, and obviously a, a staple at New York Fashion Week and so forth. So, uh, and, and Liz, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Super excited to be with you guys. Yes. Uh, well, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, I mean, you, there's so many different things we could do, but for, for sake of today, I really want to talk about a, something that you've done that's really unique. And that is uh, you have you are one of the most successful vendors in the pageant industry. You in terms of and, and you have you've, you've done it across systems. Uh, you're not just in one little uh, concentration and you've done this for years and I, I think about all the different, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners and companies that really could service and supply and be a great vendor to the pageant industry, but they don't know how to break into the industry. How do I become a vendor? How do I be a good vendor when I'm at uh, the pageant? So uh, maybe give a, a quick snippet of how long you have been associated with, with uh, uh, pageantry and uh, maybe what the early days were like getting started. <laughs> Um, the early days were awful. <laughs> yeah. That's probably encouraging um, to most people to hear. Yes. Yeah, the early days were awful. Um, and I think that part of, part of that was because, um, I think I didn't know what I know now about branding. Right. And I knew about staying relevant. Um, but I didn't know what I know now about branding. Right. I think I started studying branding in probably 2011. So, um, one of the things that I do as an image consultant as well is helping people look like what they sell. Um, and I think that one of the most important things that you can do in the pageant industry is look like what you sell and have a very clear brand that is relevant to people. And I think that the thing that most people struggle with, if you're talking about being, um, a vendor, like in the pageant community, you know, is how do I serve this community and stay relevant to them? Because as pageant people, I would have to say that we're very trendy. Um, we're also probably a very fickle um, customer, which I think is good. Um, and you have to know, it, this is just like any other niche, I guess you could say, right? You have to know how to appeal to the niche. And um, I think that that is what I have tried to do well. Um, is appealing to the niche, but then also knowing that within that niche market, I also have my own customer and client. Like I'm not everybody's makeup artist. Um, and I'm not going to talk junk about other people. You, you know, I'm not going to do people comparisons and, you know, all those kind of things. And so within that, I think that um, I have tried to find like one of my prayers has been that I would have clients that loved me like I loved them, mm. that I could help and support and that they would do the same for me so that it was us constantly filling each other's bucket. You know what I mean? Yes. And I think when a lot of people come in, while yes, there is money to be made in the pageant industry, um, pageant people, we see right through those who are just here to make money. Yeah. Um, if you're just here for the short term, it's not going to work for you. Um, and so you have to kind of be three to five years in and you have to be in people's faces. You know what I mean? People have to meet you. They want to see you in per person. Um, and then being able to also think of a really honorable way to deliver um, that which you sell. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, whether it is makeup, whether it is being a dress boutique, um, you know, ma no matter what it is, and then staying on trend because your your primary um, pageant client is very much like Nike's primary client, right? What we know from brand research is that Nike's uh, primary client is a forethinker, right? Mm. Which is why Nike creates campaigns that make you think and feel, and you may not agree, but you're still going to buy the Nike is right because the that Nike thing, that goddess of victory thing, it's going to make you purchase because you're a forethinker. You want to be on the precipice. You want to be ahead, right? So that's the customer that Nike's client is. So you also have to be intelligent enough in the brand space, you know what I mean, to know, um, you know, who your client is and are you 
are you a precipice, you know, uh, a client? Are you a, you know, what, what is it that your brand delivers so that you can not only deliver the skill set, but also deliver that vibe, that feeling, that thing to people, which I found was, uh, was really empowerment. You know what I mean? Mm. For me, I saw confidence and glamour. That's, and that's really interesting. I, I want to go back to one thing that you said that uh, is, I think, separates the pageant industry from most every other industry I know, especially as, as, as it is, relates to being a vendor and, and an outside vendor that maybe want to tap into pageantry, which we want to welcome them. But I think many of them fail when they come in because they don't understand. You cannot approach this like a, tra- like a traditional industry and go in and set up your little booth and your table and people are going to you know fall over to to get to you. Uh, they, uh, they don't want, it is very relational driven in this industry. Yes. It's not just, uh, oh, you provide this service. It's I'm buying, they're buying you as much as they are buying your service. Yes. There's a, there's a huge crossover, um, between personal brand and let's just say corporate or business brand, right? Um, it's very Steve Jobs ish, if you will. Uh, it's very Apple. Um, who is, who is Apple without Steve jobs, without his legacy? It's a question mark, right? Um, what is own network without Oprah question mark? Right. Um, and it's like, I always say, um, I'm never offended when there's a new makeup artist on the block. I'm super support because I didn't find, there wasn't a lot of support when I first started. Um, it's not like it is now where people are just happy to support other people's aesthetics and love the work that other people do. Um, I always say anybody can go to Target and buy makeup brushes, right? Anybody can do it. But it's what you bring to those makeup brushes that makes the difference. It's what you bring to being a dress shop. It's what you bring um, to being a pageant coach, to being a, and and knowing your story really well and being able to um, deliver it to people and being consistent. You know, it's, it's, it's very similar to sports as well. Um, I come from a football family. You know what I mean? I'm only as good as my last down. I'm only as good as my last game. If I was the MVP for the last game, then I'm the MVP coming into this one, you know? And so for me, it really has been kind of tapping into um, kind of a long haul thought. Yes. Um, You know, and then I think I think one thing that also hinders people in that space um, from really being able to um, deliver their goods and deliver their service in a really trademark way, you can't be offended that you're not going to please everybody. Mm. You know, everybody is not going to like what you deliver. Mm-hmm. Everybody is not going to be a fan of your work. Everybody is not going to be, but for those people who really are a fan of your work, they're going to bring other people that are just like them who will fill your um, opportunity to serve them with such joy. And when I, you know, in the beginning, I told you I, I didn't know that much about branding, right? And so I'm just kind of having to take whatever client comes along. And it's just all about like, whether or not they like me, whether or not we're best friends, whether or not we're this, whether or not we're that, right? And so at some point, I start to say, you know what, it's got to be about more than this, or I can't do this anymore. And I really had to cross over that line And say to myself, and I still say to myself all the time, I have to be more than a hired brush. Mm -hmm. Because if all you are is a hired brush or all you are is a a hired dress giver, you know what I mean? Like, it's not going to work. So how do you become really an expert in your field? Not just at the application, let's say in my case of makeup, but also like for me, that's why I went on to get my image certification and, you know, all those kind of things. Because I began to think about it from a really scientific perspective. standpoint, you know, um, of like, how do I really help the person present their entire selves? Um, and also, you know, as an artist, when I first started, there was a lot of like, everybody looks the exact same and this is how you win. Right. Where now, and one of the things that I really, when I first started, I said, I want the person to look like what they look like. Right. Mm. And so the highest compliment ever for me was after um, I had been at it for a while. People said, I love your work because you make the person look like who they are, you know, not just like a stock photo, if you will. Yes. And so even now, um, that's one thing that I'm trying even now in this quarantine space. Yes. You know, my question is, how can I serve 
my client even better, to dig even more of them out before they even sit in my chair. Um, because my commitment is really to the person, not just um, what they're paying me, you know, to, to serve them. And I want to, I want to be able to do that mm -hmm. rolling on a better level than I've ever done that before, mm. you know, because my passion really isn't even the makeup all the time. It really is the opportunity to change someone's life through a simple interaction of saying, Hey babe, you are beautiful. You are the bomb. Hello, gorgeous. Yeah. How are you? What's going on? Right. And, um, and that story really comes from, I worked um, at a restaurant that had one of the locations right by a hospital. Right. And one of the I had gone over, I was a corporate trainer for that um, restaurant chain and I had gone over to um, I had gone over to work for them one of the days like they couldn't get enough people or something like that. So I'd gone over to help train some of the new girls and that kind of stuff. And during the shift meeting, one of the um, people, one of the uh, managers said, I want you guys to remember that you don't know what people have been through during this day. People come in here and their mom might be on life support. You know, they might be, you know, on the, in the ICU, you know, whatever, because the restaurant was literally right across the street from the hospital. And so when I started, I said, I'm going to have every single um, email start with hello, gorgeous. Every piece yeah. of my um, interaction is going to start with hello, gorgeous, because I don't know how this woman truly feels about herself. Right. Um, I don't know what she's been through today. I don't know um, if she's got anxiety about booking a makeup artist for the first time or doing a pageant for the first time. And when I really knew that my brand was working is now people buy me t-shirts that say hello, gorgeous. I get makeup uh, bags, all kinds coffee cups, almost every coffee cup that I have in my um, cupboard says hello gorgeous on it. Because when people see hello gorgeous, if they've had inter in any interaction with me, they can't bypass the hello gorgeous without thinking of me. Right. right. And so I think also in the space of being a vendor, as you're thinking out your brand, you have to think about what is signature to you. Copying somebody else's service model is not going to cut it because you're going to be anybody else with a brush, right? You're going to be anybody else that teaches girls how to walk. What is signature to your story that you can give people that will uplift them, that will help them remember themselves, and it will give you an opportunity to serve them even better? Yeah. You know, I've heard uh, from people who have sat in your chair that one of the best parts of sitting in your chair is is that you speak life into them. And it's how they feel about themselves, not just how they look, but but they, they, they are ready for the game. They've got their game face on and not just the makeup side of things when they get out of your chair. That's huge. That's um, that's such a blessing because that's what I that's what I want. You know, it's it's a, it's a reason why. Um, in the middle of this, you know, a lot of people shy away from from sharing their faith, you know, as well. And for me, that's a huge part of my brand. I mean, if you don't like Jesus, you may not like me <laughs> or else you were sent to me to get some of my light. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. I just don't shy away from that because when things really started working for me, Roland, was when I really started being outspoken about Jesus mm. and about what he had done in my life and about how he had delivered me from being someone who was... Um, depressed for almost 10 years. I walked mm. through clinical depression, um, bulimia from seventh grade to college. Um, and when you look at the photos of who she was, I mean, everybody just thought she had it all together. And I think that a lot of times in the pageant world, in the modeling world, in the fashion world, in the beauty world, you're looking at this person and you think they have it all together. But if if I was to spend my life only focused on lip gloss, I would be making a mistake yeah. about what God had really put me in the industry to do and the light that he had sent me to be. And so I think for others, the time is now, especially in quarantine, right, for you to tap into what is it that re that God really put you here to do and to be? What is it? What is the message behind your brand? What is in the DNA of the service that you give? Because if you don't know what that is, then you, it, it won't matter how trendy you are. It won't matter how how many of um, the great artists out of Dubai that you study? It won't matter. Um, it won't matter what what company endorses you. Um, and you know, God will cause favor over you that you cannot even explain. You know, my relationship with there's several cosmetic companies that I can tell you right now. I have no idea why every time I ask them something, the answer is yes, right? Or why they 
over over deliver over send Liz what else can we whatever because those were doors that I never thought I would be able to knock on you know what I mean those are people that I never or they just found me on Instagram you know what I mean it's just a godfidence thing I just had confidence in God's timing yeah. um, and I think also removing your ego from it you know that's a huge piece of of what it really is is it's not about what I can do it's about what he can do through me Right. And so when I removed my ego as to whether or not you thought I was the best artist of the day or whether or not you thought I was the blah, 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 blah. What do I think about myself? How hard have I studied? What does God say about me? Um, did I do a good job creating a relationship with my client even before they got there? You know, sometimes uh, sometimes I've been talking to that person. The pageant may be in June of let's say 2020, but they sent me their deposit in August of 2019. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they had seen my work or had worked with me before and already knew that they wanted to do that, knew that I might book out for that pageant or whatever. So I've had that deposit a year in advance, you know? Yeah. And so how have I created that relationship ahead of time with that person? And, you know, that's what has really shaped my social media. I don't get on and do lives because I think I'm cool. I get on and do lives because it's another way that I can create a relationship with my folks. You know what I mean? Yeah. That I can elevate myself as an expert in my um, industry. It's another thing that pushes me to study, you know? So like today I did uh, my very first makeup and motivation, right? Um, because in my my brand's DNA, um, motivation and empowerment, self-image, mm -hmm. self-worth is a huge piece of that. And I don't want people to use makeup to try to cover up what God did. I want them to use it to enhance that beauty that God put within them so that they really have the opportunity to showcase themselves. Because you know, like I know, when you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you look good. And if whether you're doing a keynote in front of people, a workshop, um, whether you're an on camera guest, whether you're on stage rocking the runway, whatever it is, there is something about someone who is not searching from other people's validation. Yeah. They are just in the moment and they are just like, yes. And when your inside is all up on some yes, you're outside, like you could wear a trash bag and people are like, oh, I need that trash bag. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. No, you, you're, you're right. Uh, in closing, I want to ask this because uh, you've, you've said you've touched on so many points, but um so one other thing for vendors looking at, at, you know, participating and entering the pageant industry, what are some things like they can't just say, oh, I was trained in makeup, uh, uh, you know, entertainments, maybe makeup because movie makeup is very different than this or uh, wedding, ma wedding makeup is very different. There may be even differences between systems of how you should do that, whether it's more natural Absolutely. or more glam or, you know. And so how, you, it obviously, I think one of the first things before a vendor starts, you know, investing in the pageant industry is to, uh, to like you said, understand what their niche is, what, where do they play, where do they go right. at, what value do they actually add. And then they need to understand all of the different nuances between systems and through age uh, yes. divisions and, and yes. the type of makeup. And there are. There are so many, so many nuances in between different programs. And this goes for and maybe what style, what like, yeah, what almost whatever the service. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, so I would say the four things that you could do, and this would be um, whether you're a dress boutique, a makeup artist, whatever, right? Number one is study, uh, study the brand, right? Don't just study the brand material or the website, but also go back through photos from the last maybe two or three years um, of people competing um, and be, you know, get on some of the different Instagram sites, use um, Pageant Planet's Instagram, use um, Road to Miss USA, um, use, you know, a lot of different, use some of the different Instagram sites um, so that you can really kind of look at what the reality of pageant makeup is versus a lot of times what people think or believe pageant makeup is or the look is, you know what I mean? Um, and so that would be the same for your clothing. That would be the same for, you know, even if you're creating a new pageant system, do your research, right? And know what know what those different programs are looking for when it comes to the look, right? Um, the second thing is really curate your brand from a truthful and honest 
point. You know, um, the brand is more than the logo and the website and the colors, right? Um, the brand is about your five senses. What does it look like? What does it smell like, right? What does it taste like to people? My brand tastes like glitter to people, right? Um, because they swallow it, goes down on their insides, and it makes them all sparkly. Um, and so you have to know how to kind of curate what, what are the five senses of your brand and how do you live it out loud? The third thing is you need to honor your own personal presentation, right? Um, your own personal presentation, I always say, um, when you walk in, people meet you. They don't meet your logo, right? So you need to look like that which you sell. 90% of the information, studies tell us, um, like from the 3M Corp, um, studies tell us that 90% of the information that our brain takes in is visual, right? So if the visual is off, we're, it's over, right? Dr. Albert Morabian from UCLA um, did a study that tells us that Basically, right, if we're, we're looking at all of it, 93% of our communication is visual, nonverbal, right? So it's everything from how I deliver the message to what I look like delivering the message, my the body language that goes along with it. So really think out how do I deliver the message and how do I present myself, you know, as the living, breathing, walking logo, you know, for my brand that I am. Um, the fourth thing is really create relationships from an organic standpoint, right? Right can see right through being someone who's been around for a while. I can see right through an email that, uh, you know, an artist may say of like, Hey, I want to work from you and learn everything from you. I know what you're saying. You want to see how I do things. You want to start trying to do my schedules. You want to, you know, and I've had things like that happen to me. So, you know, after you've been around for a while, you're like, all right, girl, thank you. You know, as opposed to, Hey, here are the images, um, that, are from my last two months of work, I would be so willing to work on your team or, you know what I mean, to right. come and just help for one pageant and just see if you like my work. I'm a, a fan of your brand, you know, whatever. That's super organic to me. You know what I mean? Yes. So creating those relationships, not just from a money-making standpoint, um, but also from a really organic standpoint of, you know, hey, I really want to learn and I love what you do. Um, because when you can remove your ego from that and have this organic relationship, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. The fifth free and most final thing I would say, though, is please respect pageant directors. Please respect them, especially if you are a vendor, you're coming onto their turf to make money based on their hard work. And the thing that irritates me the most in the whole wide world is when people don't even tell the pageant director, thank you, but they're the one who's put out the money, right? They're the one who's secured the venue. They're the one who's done all of this talking to contestants and families and mothers. And if, if there are 300 girls in their pageant, by the time you have mom and dad and grandma, we're over a thousand people that they've been talking to, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that we have to go back to a place where we really honor um, directors and honor that which the director is putting out um, and say thank you to them as well because our industry is nothing without having that person that gives us the opportunity. You know, the Bible tells us to be careful how we build on another man's ground, right? And that's wisdom and all you're getting, get wisdom. And so that, that wisdom of just respect and organic relationship and presenting yourself um, and just loving the girls, yeah. love the girls. If you don't love the girls, this is not for you. <laughs> I'm telling you, everything about this is so different than, than uh, I can just imagine the normal vendor coming in and saying, okay, we 2.5 million girls compete in pageants every year in the United States alone. We want to start, you know, setting up a booth, take our dress boutique, our tanning slide, whatever they, they're, they're providing. And the, and it's so different. You're, you're one of two, three, four vendors maybe in the hallway, uh, you're not going to show up between this time and this time, like expo hours, and then escape to your hotel room and never talk to somebody, pass out a business card and not want conversation. That is, you've got a total wrong picture of how this goes. And like you said, uh, most of them think that whoever puts on the conference, they uh, that they, they think almost think they're over them. And like, well, I paid you, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks for my intro. For yes. And that's not the way it works in pageantry because of the, it's so much more personal because of the relationship. In fact, usually at least a year's relationship with many of these people uh, yes. uh, from where all the recruiting and the, and, and the work that it took to get to the production and the show. Yes. And you're one of, and you can be a beautiful part of the pageant industry uh, if you'll abide by these five, five protocols, because I think, 
this is how we this is how you set yourself up for success your brand and your company and yourself you will actually enjoy going to these type of events and you will be uh, effective at those events uh, because uh, you understand the ecosystem the environment and the culture really behind pageantry yeah I think there's a huge huge portion you know I I got to a certain point in my career and I'd won some awards and done some other things and I thought oh maybe this isn't for me anymore you know and then and then I thought I really love being a part of people's journey I think it's something I'll always do I've always had you know the style portion of my business I've always had that um, while I do keep them very separate because it's kind of it's weird to have one thing that serves two totally different niches. Um, but, um, you know, no matter what I ever do, I will always be doing somebody's mascara at some point because, right. because it really, I really love and value the opportunity to share that moment with them. Even if it's five minutes, you know, even if it's just their retouch, a lot of times people will come back to you, especially being a makeup artist. You can't be upset when people come back for a retouch because what they're coming back to you for is not the retouch. They're coming back to you for one more opportunity to get just a little bit more confidence from you that they look their best. Mm. And, um, you know, that was a hard lesson for me to learn. Cause you're like, oh, I'm already done. And they're like, is there anything? And I will always say, I don't care if their face looks perfect. I will always say, yes, baby, let me give you just a little bit more blush. Yes, why don't we get just a little bit more lip gloss or a little bit more this or a little bit more that? Because a person, it's really not even what they think. They are nervous or they're, you know, they're whatever. And this is just one more chance that you get to be able to build that person up. And in this industry, I really think that that has to be our focus is how can we build women of all ages up? What opportunities can we present them with um, that will allow them to grow as people? Because one of the reasons I think that I've done well with my branding and image clients in my image consulting business, right, is the fact that I did pageants. And so I understood how to build the package. I understood why I needed to lose the weight or why I needed to wear my hair that certain way. So I'd never, I don't take it personally. You know what I mean? Right. Like we're going through kind of a rebranding thing. Now that pageant stage gives you the opportunity to really think out what every piece of your personal presentation says, which is why pageant girls go on to be very successful in business, law, um, uh, medical care, you know, whatever it is. And why you see a lot of them step out and become all types of incredible experts, because this is almost a an incubator, right, for brilliant talent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, thank you again, uh, Liz, for just sharing your insight on, and you've been in it for over a decade and at it, and you've been able to evolve and pivot, and you've had to learn business and entrepreneurial skills and branding and marketing. Uh, the whole thing. <laughs> of just the raw talent of the service and services that you provide. So uh, thank you so much for sharing it with us. And, and once again, I think even you doing this is exemplary of exactly what we're saying, the type of a vendor people need to be if they're going to be a, a part of the pageant industry. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. I've thank you for having me. Um, I appreciate what you guys are doing as well. Thank you so much. Thank you.